go check up on Boris. Let's see what he's doing. Oh my God, Boris, what are you doing? Hello there, Gaurav. I'm I'm cooking something. The reason Tim sort is so good is because it's a hybrid sort. It uses binary insertion sort, merge sort, and modifies them to get an even more efficient result. Now, it'll probably be easier to understand this video if you're familiar with big O notation and binary insertion and merge sorting, so we'll direct you to these three videos now. Alright, now that you're either educated or just very bold, we can get into the technicalities. TimSort begins by asking one question. Are there more than 64 elements in the array? If there aren't, then life's simple. You just use binary insertion sort. So now we're going to be doing an example of binary insertion sort. So as you can see, we have an array up here. And we're going to be sorting it into this new array, a sorted array, down here. So we're going to start off with 4, which is our first element, and put it at index 0 in our sorted array. Now we're going to check our next element, which is 5, which is greater than 4, so we can just put it in the next index, which is 1. 9, same thing, it's greater than 5, so we can just fit it into index number 2. However, now we're at 3, and we see that 3 belongs to the left of 9. So now we're going to have to do a binary search. The middle of this would be 1, so we're going to look at index 1. And we're going to see 3, does it belong on the right side or left side? Left side. So now we're going to take a look at these two elements and look at the middle, which is going to be 0. At this index, we can see that 3 actually belongs to the left of 4, but we've run out of array. So we're going to have to put 3 at index 0 and move everything else to the right. Alright, now that we've put 3 where it belongs, we can continue down our array. So after 3 is 1. We run into the same problem again. 1 actually belongs to the left side of 9. So we're going to do the same binary search. Find the middle, which is going to be index number 1. At index 1, we see that 1 is less than 4. So it's going to have to go to the left of 4. So then we do another binary search right here and the middle is going to be at index 0 and we can see once again that 1 belongs to the left of 3 so but we've run out of array so we're going to have to move all these values to the right and place 1 at index 0. Now we put 1 in its right place and we can move on to our last element which is 10 and lucky for us it belongs to the right side of 9 and now we have successfully sorted this array using binary insertion sort. Now let's go back to Tim sort. All right, now we get into the complicated material. If there are more than 64 elements in an array, a few extra steps are taken. Tim sort's efficiency hinges around a set of data called the run. In any real world data, there's likely some data that's already in order. That's a run. TimSort exploits this by looking for runs in the data array that you input. For example, in this data array, you have 5, 7, 8, 9, and 3, and so forth. But in this data, 5, 7, 8, and 9 are in ascending order, whereas 3 is less than any of those. So, the run here is 5, 7, 8, 9. The next important concept is a min run. So, the algorithm finds min run, the minimum length of each run that gives the most efficient time later on in, in later steps. Using the min run, the algorithm creates runs in ascending and equal or descending order. If the length of a run is less than a min run, the algorithm adds the next element to the run value as seen here. The run is 8 and 12, and the next element is 9. And because the min run is 3, there has to be 3 elements in this subarray, in this run. So it adds 9, and then, no matter what the case is, once the array is divided into the runs, the algorithm begins to sort the runs using binary insertion sort, and that's when this problem is resolved, and the run is turned into 8, 9, 12. Another feature of TimSort is that if minrun is met, but the next element follows the pattern, it keeps going. So in this example, where minrun is 3 and the array has the elements 4, 8, 10, and 12, 4, 8, and 10 already meet the minrun. But 
219 still follows the ascending pattern. 4, 8, 10, 219, right? So, what happens is that the array still considers 219 as part of this run. Another feature of Tim Sort is that if the run is in descending order, it is blindly reversed. So in this example, where the run has elements 219, 10, 8, and 4, this is in descending order, the array is blindly reversed into 4, 8, 10, and 219, ascending order. If you want to know why it's important that it's only descending here, and not descending or equal to, watch our video on balance and stability. Now that we have these runs, we're going to merge them. And to do this, we're going to be using merge sort. So how merge sort works is it takes an array and halves it until you're left with just the elements. Then it groups these uh, elements in order until you have your final or, uh, ordered array. Timsort, however, gets rid of all this unnecessary work. And you just have your sorted runs and merge them together. Another way Timsort makes the merging process a lot more efficient is by using galloping. It's easiest to explain it using an example. So here, run A has elements 1, 100, 200, and 300. And run B has every number from 2 to 100. In the new run, we put element 1, because it's less than the first element, 2, here. Then, it checks if 2 is in between 1 and 100. It is, so it puts 2. Same thing for 3, 4, all the way up to 8. Then, the algorithm realizes that all of these, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's 7 elements that all came from run B. Now, 7 is a magic number in Java. What happens next is because all of these 7 elements came from run B, it looks for the first element in run A, which is 100 here, and tries to find it in run B. So now, it knows that everything between 8 and 100 in run B, that can all be directly copied over into the final run. Then, the algorithm returns a merge sorting as normal. So now that it has all of these elements between 8 and 100 in the final run, it checks 101. Where is 101 compared to 100? It is greater. So now, it inserts 101. Then, because that's all that there is left here, it directly copies 200 and 300. And that is your final run. Now to talk about efficiency. So here's a big O notation for Tim sort and its component sorts, binary insert and merge sort. Just to make it a bit easier to read. So at a glance, it seems that here, where log n is the average value for binary insertion sort, it seems that binary insertion sort is better than Tim sort. And that merge sort and Tim sort, you know, these values are all the same, right? Well, the difference is that TimSort incorporates merge sort and binary insert insertion sort very, very strategically. Remember, the first question that we asked with TimSort is whether the array has more than 64 elements in it. If it doesn't, then it uses binary insertion sort because it's just faster. After 64 elements, though, binary insertion sort gets really slow, so TimSort becomes faster. Then, for merging, the reason that Tim sorts best is better than just merging is just because of the runs and the galloping. So with the runs, you remember that we skipped a lot of the steps for merge sort. And with galloping, again, it just makes it faster because after seven elements, or that's the default, it'll just take a whole lot of elements and copy them just in a chunk. That's why it's so much faster. And that, Garo, is how you know. Tim Sword.